let's get started with a bit more of a, a philosophical question then. So as somebody who's had a great deal of experience with history, both as part of a humanities and a social science, what role has theory and philosophy played in your education and in your work since you've um, completed your PhD? Um, since I've completed my PhD, um, theory has played a really important part in terms of how I think about approaching historical research. And that's mainly because relatively quickly after finishing my PhD, I started work in a social sciences department. So perhaps, perhaps unusually, I'd say I had a lot more engagement with particularly sociological and criminological theories than I might otherwise have had. And during my PhD, I, um, my PhD supervisor had come from a social policy department, well, herself, um, and so was framing things very much in that kind of social scientific way in which theory theory kind of predominates. That said, I think this, for me, the tension between theory and I suppose a more empirical approach to research is something that I've been kind of grappling with since my A-levels, um, mainly because and I, I don't think I'm unique in, in unique in this, certainly we're both people who've done English and history, but there are quite a lot of people who have that background in English who could have moved into moved into history and certainly I mean I first came across um, theory as a as a way of explaining the world during my A-levels when I studied English French history and media studies the last one allegedly for fun but that's where it was actually it was fun, but it was not easy by any stretch of the imagination, uh, mainly as we were grappling with a lot of postmodern theory. So I had that kind of introduction to how theory can explain the world, how it can offer a way of allowing you to explore your own ideas, to test things and to challenge and to also start making your own theory as well. When I came to actually do my undergraduate degrees, um, history and English were in very different places. English in the 1990s was really engaging with theory, and by this I mean postmodern theory, really, in a big in a big way. And the historians were not. So it was quite quite a big well, or some people were, but they were not necessarily engaging with the postmodern. They were there was a lot of interest in psychoanalysis um, and kind of ideas about some more kind of sociological theories, but not necessarily the cultural turn. And this, in many ways, maps what we know broadly about the historical profession and its interest in that. But I think for me, I've never had a particularly um, firm theoretical position that's mine, that I kind of advocate for, that I that I kind of see as a, I suppose, all encompassing framework. As far as I am, I tend to have a grounded theory approach, which um, I was really glad when I discovered what grounded theory was, because it does explain what I try to do, which is to try and um, develop theory and engage with it based on what I've been finding in the archives so that it's that's the relationship for me. And so I try and keep myself open to a range of different approaches. And so I've um, engaged quite a lot with things like hegemony, for example, um, for things like actor network theory is something I'm grappling with at the moment, particularly trying to think about the the tech, well, the use of technology in welfare from the information technology from the 1960s onwards. And I found things like the sociology of money, very useful sociology of time. And, and again, drawing upon those things I was introduced to much earlier on in my career about um, postmodern theory. So that I feel like it's something that rather than having one particular, you know, my area, that I am an advocate for, but that I take more of a following what will further what I'm doing as form of as and I suppose as historians, social scientists, humanities scholars, we are part of that much bigger conversation about theory, about about causality, all those kinds of things. So it's part of that ongoing kind of dialogue about how we make sense of this rock spinning in space near a sun. <laughs> That's fascinating. And and one thing that I've noticed you saying that I would say really chimes with my own experience. So I, I did my undergraduate sort of the turn of the 21st century. So 
um, it's sort of a, an overlapping period where you've got quite a lot of um, older scholars who are very much committed to, um, I, I would say that sort of baby boomer um, empirical history. And then we've got a lot of junior scholars, PhD students, a lot of them, who are very much trying to embrace the cultural turn and um, postmodern, postmodernism, postcolonial, postracial theories, which are still kind of in their infancy in even the liberal arts colleges of the United States. And one thing I really noticed during my own education was that theory was not something that was taught to us within the framework of history. So theory was taught to us, but we were always kind of outsourced. So you would gain theory by taking a sociology class, or you would gain quantitative methods by taking a geography module, as opposed to theory, historiographical theory, being a core part of my education. And so when I started to teach theory and method to my students, I've really had to go back to the 1960s or earlier to sort of really grapple with the idea of what historiographical theory is, as opposed to borrowing sociological, political, English literature, theatrical performance studies theories, which is something I've been relying on for a long time. Would you say that's sort of your experience as well, that historiographical theory is not something that has remained part of the core curriculum recently? Yeah, and, and I say this having, well, recently merged a, an historical methods course with a broader social science methodology, but that that reflects mainly partly the program I'm teaching on, but also where the knowledge was and what I thought my students needed to know. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I was taught, I think about where I was taught theory. I was taught theory in English. It was particularly because I did an MA in English. And mm -hmm. so particularly in, in my PhD career in history, um, I had unrivaled opportunities as someone who did know about Deleuze and Guattari, who had been introduced to Foucault and those those kinds of ideas. Um, but yeah, the same. It was um, something, I suppose we were taught Marxism, which is a form of theory, but it again is a very kind of empirical, empirically kind of led, um, led discipline. But it was kind of getting in there with thinking about, say, women's history, gender history but there's a there is a point to which there's a point to which you can have theoretical conversations that have been led by historians and I think this is where you kind of get into Hayden White people like Patrick Joyce those kinds of conversations about like what history is in relation to theory um, but in some ways to understand things you, you, there's more of a magpie approach that you do have to take things from other disciplines in order to make it meaningful for students. Now, there, there shouldn't be, these shouldn't be ideas that are kind of bounded by disciplinary disciplinary borders. And we shouldn't be kind of saying, oh, you can't look at that because that's what geographers look at. But it is very much that historians having those kinds of conversations, writing those kind of articles is later. It comes later. I would say, yeah, I mean, it can be from the 60s. If we're looking at, um, I suppose in the class I was teaching, the historiography, the, histor the more theoretical historiography starts with, you know, the making of the English working class by E.P. Thompson, for example. Yeah. And then it spins into, well, let's start thinking about women and gender and then issues around race. I suppose, again, starting to think about those other things. But are they being theoretical in the way we're talking about? Starting to. I think it's where you can see the shoots of postmodernist understandings kind of coming in. Yeah, it's something that happens much later for historians. <laughs>